Welcome to the first part of our series, where we'll talk about something really important which includes sexual energy, celibacy, semen retention, and brahmacarya. In today's video, we will discuss about the transformative power of sexual energy and how it can lead us to a state of happiness and spiritual awakening. So today, we are starting our journey into this fascinating topic. Sometimes we may believe we have control over sex, but in reality, it can trap us and affect our consciousness. When sexual desires arise, they can poison our innocence and simplicity by being driven by passion. Sex can be enslaving for men as they can be controlled by their biology, hormones, and bodily chemicals. It is important to open our eyes and become aware of this trap. Avoiding getting stuck in the darkness. Some people are unaware of this trap and only see sex as a source of pleasure. Breaking free from this trap becomes nearly impossible for them because they fail to recognize any issue with it. They are like animals in a zoo, comfortable because they are fed and safe from danger, but they are unaware that they are confined in a cage. Engaging in sex can make us lose self-awareness and keep us fixated on external experiences. It is not considered a sin, but rather a distraction that prevents us from truly knowing ourselves. We need to question what we gain from sex. Throughout history, religions have held strong beliefs and moral codes about sex and sexuality. They emphasize sexual restraint and self-control as a means to uphold moral standards and maintain social order within religious communities. Religious leaders want to show their followers the right way by saying that some sexual actions or behaviors are wrong. But it's also important for religion to talk about more than just saying what's wrong. Religion should discuss the amazing potential of sexual energy and how it can change our minds, hearts, and spirits. We need to explore the feelings, thoughts, and the spiritual side of sex and how we can change it into something positive. When people allow their instincts to guide them and engage in sexual intercourse, they may think they are experiencing something extraordinary on a physical level. However, their minds can deceive them into believing they are in a special place with a special person, when in reality they are trapped in a problem. Sometimes, people can get hooked on the good feelings they get from sex when we have sex. Our bodies make chemicals that make us feel really good. Some folks keep looking for this good feeling and become addicted to these chemicals. But here's the thing, that good feeling doesn't last and it does not make us truly happy or help us grow as people. After fulfilling the desire, moments of clarity may arise where we understand deep down that it was unnecessary. We may feel weakness entering our bodies. However, these moments are temporary, and we soon find ourselves trapped in desire and longing once again. The issue is that doing what we want does not make us truly happy. Even if we get what we wished for, it does not make a big difference. And we still feel like something's missing. It's like a never-ending loop. Trying to get what we want does not really make us truly happy. Because real happiness comes from not wanting anything in the first place. Desires, by their very nature, perpetuate an endless cycle of longing and temporary satisfaction. They oscillate between two states, the yearning to fulfill a desire and the fleeting satisfaction of having fulfilled it. Just like a cigarette smoker who craves a smoke, once the desire is satisfied, it resurfaces after a short span of time. If you observe such a smoker, you will likely find them lighting up another cigarette within 30 minutes. Caught in an unending loop, this pattern repeats throughout the day, trapping the smoker in a ceaseless cycle of desire and temporary fulfillment. Even if the desire is fulfilled, the smoker knows that in another half an hour they will once again be left unsatisfied. True fulfillment, therefore, stems from relinquishing desires and discovering alternative ways to experience life. 
it is crucial that we refrain from investing excessive time and energy in pursuing insatiable desires that divert our attention from our authentic nature. True fulfillment comes from letting go of desires and finding a different way to experience life. We need to stop focusing so much on trying to satisfy never-ending desires that take us away from who we really are. If we keep going in this direction, when will we find the time to connect with the special spiritual part of ourselves that's trying to reach us? When confronted with sexual desire, the appropriate response lies in cultivating a more meditative state of being. If desires arise within us, there is no need to panic or become anxious. Instead, we can choose to meditate on those desires by simply acknowledging their presence and maintaining a state of mindfulness. We can witness the desires without judgment. Through this practice of awareness and vigilance, the energy contained within those desires can be transformed into something else. The path to celibacy should be embarked upon gradually. It is essential to gradually release anything that consistently pulls us towards sexuality. This process may prove challenging. As very few individuals have succeeded on their initial attempt, nonetheless, perseverance is key. We must continue to move forward and persist in our efforts. Each attempt brings us closer to our goal and with determination. We can make progress along this transformative journey. It is worth considering the idea of experiencing freedom from desires, including the desire for sexual gratification, at least once in our lives. By freedom, I mean liberating ourselves from the constant longing to satisfy our sexual desires. When consumed by lust and overwhelmed by its presence, we can find solace by closing our eyes, entering a state of silence, and engaging in meditation focused on the energy that surrounds us. We should observe it, attempt to feel it, and even endeavor to connect with it. By doing so, we will witness a remarkable transformation. If you dedicate just 10 days to this practice, you will discern that no sexual encounter can rival the beauty that emerges. When you observe your lust and, through mindfulness, witness it dissipating. In that peaceful quiet, you'll find a deep silence that's even more special than being peaceful. And going beyond what you can imagine, when you change your focus from thinking too much about sex to accepting the energy you have inside, you will see this energy waking up inside you, moving and pulsating with new life. During the first stages of your practice, the energy within you seeks sexual release as it is the typical outlet for its expression. However, one must first become conscious of their downward tendencies, the patterns that lead to sexual release, through knowledge and a deliberate choice. To refrain from cooperating with those tendencies, these doors can be closed. Contrary to appearances, sex is not inherently violent. It is a temporary surge of energy that lasts for a brief period. It is not a constant struggle. Embracing this practice will immerse you in a pool of pure vital energy. This energy will elevate your aspiration towards higher, more divine pursuits. It grants you strength, endurance, mental acuity, and most importantly, heightened consciousness. You will feel the flow of vitality coursing through your entire being, a creative life force residing within you. Once you acknowledge this energy, the next time you disregard it, you will notice a profound difference. Your awareness will awaken, and you will instantly sense the energy leaving your body. Weakness will envelop you, and drowsiness will set in as you regress into unconsciousness. Yet, this experience serves a purpose. It reveals to you the existence of another realm of pleasure. A castle beyond the familiar one, you have elevated yourself from the entrapment of desires. Only to momentarily return, you now possess the knowledge that the grass is indeed greener on the other side. But the struggle against urges and desires must persist each day. It is within your power to control them and harness the available energy, transforming it into something profound. 
It is important to distinguish between two types of celibates, those who have imposed celibacy upon themselves without understanding, harming themselves in the process, and those who have embarked on a journey of comprehending sexuality. The latter have observed, experienced, and delved into its essence over time, eventually realizing its futility. Your sexual feelings come from the passion inside you. It's really important not to push down or pretend those feelings don't exist. If you try to ignore or fight them, it's not good for your inner self, your thoughts, or your body. It just makes you feel like there's a split inside you. Instead, it's better to be aware of those feelings and understand them without trying to fight them. The journey towards celibacy does not involve suppressing or repressing your impulses, for doing so will only keep you fixated on them. Suppressed aspects require continuous suppression, and if you try to move away from them, there is a risk of their resurfacing. Real freedom doesn't come from pushing down your feelings. In fact, if you do that, it's like those feelings start controlling you, and you become like a prisoner. It's way better to change those feelings. Instead of trying to hide them, think of these feelings as raw materials inside you, like diamonds that just need some polishing. And there's a lot of potential waiting to be uncovered. First, you need to realize and accept these feelings, and then work on making them a part of who you are. When you do that, these feelings become better, and they guide you towards becoming wiser and spiritually free. These energies will guide you towards the path of awareness, leading you to discover true happiness. Many individuals mistakenly seek happiness solely through bodily sensations. They believe that pleasure and sensory experiences equate to happiness. But this perspective is rooted in our animalistic tendencies. Pleasures are transient by nature, and it is impossible to remain in a constant state of pleasure. If happiness were solely derived from pleasure, then it would be fleeting. However, it is essential to recognize that there exists a state of happiness beyond the pursuit of pleasure. It is a profound psychological experience that brings fulfillment and enduring contentment. We can refer to this state as bliss, a state of awareness untainted by pride, ego, and the incessant pursuit of desire in this state. Joy is found in silence and it bestows a deeper sense of satisfaction and lasting contentment. When you reside in this state of bliss, you embrace the present moment and experience life in a unique way. You become connected to the divine essence within you, and a profound sense of happiness permeates your being. Pleasure may bind you, conventional happiness offers some freedom, but it is through bliss that true liberation is found. Therefore, Aspire towards bliss, avoiding the allure of temporary pleasures. Strive for genuine happiness and embrace the inherent bliss that resides within you. Once you've felt real happiness, the appeal of sex becomes less important and your desire for it starts to fade away. You naturally move towards celibacy, which is living without sex. Following the principles of Brahmacharya, True awareness goes way beyond just being focused on sex. It's important to know that celibacy without the practice of meditation is really just holding back your sexual feelings. In fact, without meditation, your mind might start thinking a lot about sex and you could have a lot of sexual dreams. Brahmacharya isn't about saying no to passion. It's about making passion better by purifying it, going beyond it and turning it into something higher. You can do the same thing with the energy. That makes you feel aggressive, you can change it into calmness. How you use and control your sexual energy shapes your experience. It's not just about what's happening around you. It's also about how you see it and how you live. Love is about taking sexual energy and making it more creative. When you've truly found love, you don't even need to have sex. People who want to be free from sex need to get good at love. Brahmacharya is a path that's about love and not having sex. Just holding back your feelings won't make you free from sex. It's love that lets you go beyond it and find real freedom. 
When it comes to sex, don't be too quick to judge or criticize it. Instead, accept it. Don't try to split yourself into different parts or push away feelings like anger or wanting things. This doesn't mean you're okay with those feelings, but it helps you feel balanced inside and gives you the power to go beyond those emotions. Sex is something that does not last very long. It's only there for a little while. If you don't get involved at the right time, it just stops. You have to take part in it, otherwise it just goes away. Sex is just a temporary thing, and it's easy to get so wrapped up in it that it affects your thinking and feeling. Let's conclude today's video. If this was helpful to you, do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos like this. See you in the next video. Bye.